This is the story of a man, the ruler of the Oiland Kingdom of Ithaca, who defended the right, sailed the vast ocean, and fought horrific monsters, who faced the odds to return home to his beloved wife, Penelope, and won. This is the story of Our story begins at the end of the Trojan War, a war where Odysseus's cunning and intellect proved most helpful in the plotting of schemes such as the Trojan Horse. He even took part in a valiant night raid with Diomedes. Eager to get home, he set to the water, but first his crew and him would embark on a raid against the city of Ismeros. The city went up in flames and Odysseus lost many, but he still prevailed. They then endured three days of storms. This blew them off course and unto the land of the Lotus Eaters, a land where when the men ate the lotus flower, it would make them forget their home and not want to return. Odysseus quickly realized this hazard and packed up his ship with supplies and his men and departed the island as quickly as possible. They then sailed for several more days until the men grew hungry and thirsty. They found food and drink upon the island of the Cyclops. They came into a cave where there was a grand feast. They began to eat, but then they were confronted by a horrifying beast, Polythemus. The Cyclops, luckily Odysseus had a plan to cut out his one eye and escape. Polythemus hurled rocks at them as they tried to escape and cursed the name of Odysseus. Odysseus's next misadventure is described to us by Seoul University professor, Professor Choi. Three, two, one. So after Odysseus escapes from the Lotus Series Island, what happens is Circe finds him and Circe starts to drug Odysseus' men and they eventually turn into pigs and by Hermes' help, Odysseus does not turn into pig. Uh, yeah. Odysseus and his crew then sailed to a land that no living being had previously ventured into. Odysseus ventured into the underworld with his crew in search of a prophet who held the secrets and the future of his journey. Once he found the information, he left the land of immortal suffering and ventured into the land of the immortal beast, Skyla. This three-headed monster opposed Odysseus, knowing he could not kill it, all he could do was take flight straight out of her three jaws and into the jaws of Charbonus, a whirlpool with a vast gaping mouth that swallowed men whole. Once Odysseus and his men had escaped, they found the land of Helios, the sun god's cattle. They ate the cattle, a grave mistake, as it brought the wrath of the god of lightning, the god of gods, Zeus, who sunk their ship the next time it sailed. They sunk down into the Mediterranean, all died. Their blood drained into the Mediterranean, all except for one, our hero, Odysseus. 
still fighting his way back to his beloved wife, Penelope. Several days later, he washed up along the beaches of Calypso's island. Calypso, a goddess, refused to allow Odysseus to leave. He was on the island, stuck there for seven years, until the god of war, Athena, prevailed in convincing the other gods to release him. Several days later, after building a raft, he arrived on the shores of the Phaeacians. The Phaeacians, friendly, they were to him. Especially the princess, Nausicaa, who offered him an invitation to the court, graciously. Odysseus accepted. Once in the court, Odysseus explained his trials in getting home so moved by his epic story. They offered him safe passage home, back to his wife and his home. But meanwhile in Ithaca, trouble was brewing as the suitors of Odysseus's wife Penelope were growing restless. They wanted her to make a decision. But luckily for Odysseus, Athena had a plan. They would disguise Odysseus as a beggar in his own home. To find out which suitors were good and which were bad, he then won a contest for his wife's hand in marriage. He then revealed himself to the crowd of suitors and other house guests. He then killed the suitors with the help of his allies. He then reunited with his father Laertes, but the families of the suitors would not give up so easily. They spilt more blood and started a rebellion. But luckily, Odysseus used his cunning and Athena's strength to restore peace to the kingdom and to restore Odysseus to his God-given rightful place on the throne as the king and ruler of Ithaca, ruling beside his beloved wife, Penelope.